Good evening, this is Quintus Curtius, and welcome back to the Fortress of the Mind podcast. Tonight I'm going to be reading an article that I published today on my website, qcurtius.com. And the title of this article was, You Never Got Me Down, Ray. Some people just like to hear things in an uh, audible form rather than a written form. So I thought it would be good to make a audio recording of this part of this uh, of this article so that you can download it onto your iPhone or whatever device you use and listen to it in a convenient moment so let me go ahead and launch into the reading here you never got me down ray i have a huge scar on my back it's 35 or 36 stitches, I think. I can't remember the exact number. Let me tell you how I got it. It was my freshman year in college, and this was a long time ago, mind you. I'm talking 1986 here. I attended college on a Marine Corps NROTC scholarship. And how this works is you have to do some military things while you're in school during the semester. You take some classes, do military drills, and do a lot of other things related to fitness, physical conditioning, small unit leadership, military sciences, things like that. And in the summers, you go out into the fleet and do different types of deployments. And the Marine officer candidates between their junior and senior years attend the Marine Corps Officer Candidate School, or OCS, in Quantico, Virginia, which is a big event, a big deal. It was a... Um, a great deal for me since I wanted to be a Marine officer anyway, and here they were offering to help pay for my school tuition. So this was a big event in my life. I had always been attracted to hardcore military things, and now I had a chance to prove myself. And things like physical hardships, punishment, discipline never really bothered me, uh, to be honest. And I have to be honest, I liked it. I was attending a university in the New England area in Boston. But fate has a way of intervening. Fate has a way of not cooperating with how we want things to be. There weren't many Marine Option guys in the Naval ROTC program. I'd say there were only about 20 of us in our unit out of probably maybe 150. And anyway, that's what the background was. A few times per week, we would go for conditioning runs around the Charles River in Boston, and sometimes we'd even run through Boston Commons or go up to Beacon Hill and run around there. And some of my best memories of Boston are running around through those narrow streets in the early hours of the morning when the steam just starts to rise off the sidewalk. And especially when fall starts to turn to winter and you'd get a slight patina of frost on the ground. And on one of these runs, which were always about three to five miles long, I remember feeling like my lungs were made out of plastic bags. It was a strange, disturbing feeling. I was inhaling, but yet not enough air was coming into my body. I thought it might just be a cold or something like that. But the feeling didn't go away over the next few days. In fact, it got worse. So I visited the school hospital, and they then sent me on to a local hospital there in Boston. And the news was not good. The doctor there told me I had suffered something called a spontaneous pneumothorax, that is, a collapsed lung. Apparently, some men are just born with these slight defects, which are called pulmonary blebs, on the surface of their lungs. And sometimes these blebs can rupture causing air to deflate the lung and enter the pleural cavity. And it's this negative pressure which causes the lung to collapse. So there it was. I had a serious medical problem here. They made me check into the hospital, and the doctors tried to insert tubes in my side to allow the air to escape from the pleural cavity and to see if the lung would reinflate. But it did not reinflate. And then other things started to happen. The Navy ROTC people who control the Marine officer candidates immediately disenrolled me from the scholarship program once they heard about my medical condition. 
I was out, gone, with blinding speed. No questions, no discussion, nothing. Gone. I just got a letter saying that I was medically disenrolled for now and that I would that I could apply for reinstatement. It's the pleasure of the Department of the Navy. So they just booted me out. Some Navy chief called my parents, acting like a douchebag martinet, and informed them that I was disenrolled without really any explanation. And not only this, but I would have to be in the hospital for a while now. My school was a very intense one, and missing weeks of school could mean that I would have to start all over again in the new semester, which would throw off my whole program. And now that I was out of the ROTC program, I would have to pay for everything myself. I did not come from a wealthy family, so this was a big deal for me too. But I was not going to allow this to derail my plans. I was not going to let anything stand in the way of my goals. It turned out that I would need to spend 11 days in the hospital because I could because I would need to go need to undergo an operation to remove a part of my lung. It was called a thoracotomy. So this was a big deal. And if you're a scrapper and a fighter, you will find allies. My Marine officer instructor, whose name was Captain M.C. Taylor, was an old-school Marine officer. He fought the Navy and its obtuse bureaucracy for me. He fought for me to get back in the program. To stay on top of my classes, I studied in my hospital bed. I had to memorize practically everything. I did not come from a strong background in mathematics or the sciences, so these things were not easy for me. But I had fanatical willpower. That's when I first learned I had it. I was not going to allow this to defeat me. It was not allowed. Period. It was not permitted. And somehow, it all worked out. I recovered from my operation, which took a long time. They had to sever some muscles to get to the lung. And it took a long time for them to fully recover well over a year. And I still have a huge scar on my back, which makes me look like I was bitten by a shark or something. But I sat for all my exams. I got all my work done, miraculously, from a fucking hospital bed, half in the bag from all the drugs they were giving me. You can see now why I have no sympathy for people who can't get things done by deadlines or who can't muster the tenacity to go the distance. Because it all comes down to a failure of will, a failure of nerve. And Captain Taylor forced the Navy bureaucrats to expedite my paperwork to get me reinstated in the program. If people like you, they will go to bat for you. And he did. But he wouldn't have done it if he thought that I wasn't deserving. But he knew that I had guts. But I wasn't the best runner. I wasn't the most glamorous guy. I didn't come from an environment where I had a lot of good role models or a lot of support from anyone. But I had guts, and guts was enough. And you know, after all these years, I haven't forgotten Captain Taylor. I even saw him on on, on Okinawa once in the early 90s. I ran into him. After that, I lost track of him. But I even dedicated my book, Stoic Paradoxes, to him. And you can see the inscription that's printed on the dedication page. I may even get a chance to see him this year at a reunion for the first time in 26 years. Wouldn't that be something? 26 fucking years. When I was lying in my hospital bed and I could barely lift my arms above my head because of the post-operation condition of my body, I would sometimes think of scenes from movies. It's funny how things like that can motivate you. And you know, there was one scene that kept coming into my mind. It was the scene from the film Raging Bull, where Robert De Niro takes a furious beating from Sugar Ray Robinson. He gets pummeled, pounded, beaten, and bashed. But Ray never gets him down. Ray never knocks him down. He takes incredible punishment, but he is still standing. And he says to Sugar Ray Robinson, You never got me down, Ray. You never got me down. You hear me? 
You never got me down. Let's hear him say that himself. Life will do to you what Sugar Ray did to Jake LaMotta. It's not a matter of if, but of when. You will have to go through many such trials and difficulties in your life, and everyone will try to tell you this or that about it. I was fortunate enough to have someone to help me with the things uh, he could help with, and it was more than what most would have done. But I also made my own luck. If I didn't have a good reputation, nobody would have cared about me. I would have been consigned to oblivion. But when all is said and done, you'll be left to deal with it on your own, lying in your own proverbial hospital bed. It's just the way things are. And to this day, I can't stand hospitals. I detest the sight and the sound of them. I never want to have to be in one ever again. And so never let circumstances defeat you. Never. It is not permitted. It is not allowed. You look at life squarely in the eye and spit in its eye. This is how you have to be. This is the attitude you need to have. No matter what happens, absorb the abuse. Absorb the pain. Take the pain and keep on fighting. Tell life, like Jake LaMotta told Sugar Ray, You never got me down. I'm still standing, Ray. You never got me down. This is Quintus Curtius, and this brings to an end this podcast. If you enjoyed it, I would ask that you go to iTunes and rate me on iTunes. And I would also ask if you've bought one of my books on Amazon.com, I would ask that you go and leave a review on my leave a review of one of my books on Amazon. I'd appreciate it. It helps get the word out and to get this podcast noticed by others. I'm Quintus Curtius, and this podcast was brought to you courtesy of Fortress of the Mind Productions. Good night.